So why would you want a plug-in of an A to D converter? At first glance, it seems totally ridiculous, since you've already converted your analog audio from voltage to digital zeros and ones through your computer interface. But that's precisely where this plugin performs its magic, after the converter. In this video, we're gonna focus in on gain fracturing. Gain fracturing is the act of intentionally clipping your converter. Back in the analog times, when everyone used sundials and wore grass sandals, we often ran the needle up into the red. It gave us a satisfying tape saturation with even order harmonics that felt especially good on things like drums and bass. Then along came the digital age, and those rules didn't apply anymore. In fact, it was verboten to peg the needle and hit the red. I remember Alanis Morissette's jagged little pill being slagged at the time for having been recorded on Elisa's ADATs that was considered audio slumming, and that's exactly what I was using, and people pointing out the brittle harshness of the drums and all the digital overs. By the way, 33 million copies sold. Mad respect. But distortion's a funny thing. Tape, tubes, transformers, they usually generate even order harmonics similar to what naturally occurs from acoustic instruments. So we dig that. We're also more forgiving to low-end distortion. Our ears are more sensitive around speech frequencies, roughly two to five kilohertz. So distortion in that range interferes with intelligibility. Now, digital distortion, that is a different animal altogether. The waveform is abruptly truncated and creates discontinuity. Imagine you're sitting in a canoe on the ocean and the swells, instead of being analog, which means continuous, were truncated. This also generates odd order harmonics, which we perceive as dissonant, harsh timbres. Furthermore, I just wanted to say that word, when we clip inside the DAW, aliasing distortion is generated. In plain English, frequencies above our session sample rate fold back down into the audible range, where we hear them as nasty, anharmonic, unnatural artifacts. Bleak! So why would you ever want to digitally clip anything? By clipping a high-end hardware converter's inputs, you can shave off the highest peaks in a mix, which are usually the drum transients. Because this truncates instead of softening them like a traditional limiter, they retain more of their impact and punch without becoming lifeless. The best ADD converters, like the Dangerous Music AD Plus, have a robust analog front end to capture every last electron of your audio. So when you gain fracture, you're imparting that behavior. Think about it. Push anything to its limit and it'll react. A raccoon will fight a bear when it's backed into a corner. And then a cheap mic preamp will break up before a good one. And a low budget converter will not clip gracefully. But ours does. Now while we were developing this thing, I kept coming back to the limiter analogy. So I thought, if it's a limiter, why doesn't it have a threshold? Especially because I may want to gain fracture on individual instruments, like drums, or bass, or guitars, or a vocal. But that would mean pushing the track up to zero dBFS, and now you're messing with the mix balance. So we added the threshold. And since we're clipping, I wanted to see how much. So we added the limiter counter, the overshoot meters, the gain fracture counters, and finally LUFS. With all those features and controls though, we needed a bigger box, so we added views. I like to start with extended, roll on over to gain view, and then monitor the session on the metering view. All right, go out and get creative with this thing. Surprise us.